Hey, everybody. Welcome to Unplug IT. I'm your host, Stephen Rose, and thanks for joining. This week, I am on site in Orlando, Florida for the Microsoft 365 Community Conference. I love this conference. Uh, it is all about community, bringing people together to help them to solve the issues that they're really trying to get answers for, especially around Teams, SharePoint, and OneDrive, and Copilot. Yesterday, Great keynote from Jeff Deeper talking about what's next for all of those products. Lots of demos, some really cool announcements. I'm here on the Expo 4, and you can see a lot of different vendors here. And the Microsoft booth is right there where they're talking about Teams and Viva and Copilot. So I thought, let's sit down and talk with some of the attendees about what's important to them. Why are they here? What's keeping them up at night? And what are they looking to learn more about? So you can know what everybody thinks. With that, let's take a look at some of the videos. Joy Apple, how are you? I am wonderful, Stephen. How are you? Good. Hey. How's the conference been for you? It has been exciting. Yeah? It's, it feels like, like last year, things were good, but this Still year, recovering. this year, that sizzle, that energy, that spark, it's there. It's that that energy that's been missing. We're back, baby. So you you did some sessions on Copilot readiness. That's a lot of what I've been doing. What is probably the biggest question area that folks have when it comes to preparing for Copilot, from plan deploy all the way through manage, secure all the rest? What has been the area that you think has um, had the most questions about it? So I actually have scientific information for you on this. Science. Science. We did a poll. Yeah. So we polled some of our colleagues in the community that have actually started implementing Copilot. All right. And then we did a poll in the Whova app. All right. Brilliant, right? Shameless plugs, all that good stuff. But we asked, like, where are you struggling or where do you feel you need the most help? Is it licensing? Right. Is it training and technical readiness? Is it truly understanding? Like all these different areas, 41% of the almost 100 people wow. that responded to that poll said needing to understand how to prepare their content and their environment for Copilot. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too. There's so many questions around it and what is it crap, what doesn't. The other thing that I mm -hmm. found, and we talked about this earlier on the show, is that good teams usage, quality teams usage, not using group chats because those are not picked up by co right. Having your content in SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, having your conversations in there, et cetera, yes. will turn into good co-pilot if you haven't done that, haven't turned on labeling, yeah. things right. along that line, don't understand how to use syntax, that's going to be a problem. But it's also data cleanliness and data management. Absolutely. Which helps you to get to the key thing, which is what's already being shared. Mm -hmm. What is it? What do we want to allow people to share? SharePoint made the announcement that you can now pick and choose what you want. Talk a little bit about that announcement where you can now pick and choose what you want, uh, kind of grab by Copilot. And right. What you don't. That was something that came out just a few weeks. And if I'm remembering correctly, it's like you can basically limit it to is it 100 sites yes. out of up your environment, to. up to. So there's a definite, that's a hard limit. But yeah. How many of us have had SharePoint or Teams for any amount of time where you only have 100? But that tells me we're going to have to be very intentional about, is it going to be our intranet sites where we know the content there that's published is ready to be consumed and should be consumed by the organization? Right. Probably shouldn't be HR. Right. Yeah. HR sites, anything with PII, things along that line, right. don't want it. No, it's too risky. It's too dangerous. Okay. I mean, who remembers the Delve debacle? Yes. It's going to be a repeat. And I, it is already a repeat for some people that feel, oh, we'll just turn it on. It's just going to work because it's AI. And people freaking out. If, they, if I can see this from other people, what can they see from me? And Correct. without proper training and readiness and explanations on what yes. this means and what it's going to do. So, yeah. And I think it's time to continue pushing at a more serious level. Because we joke, I think sometimes it's consultants, obscurity or security by obscurity. There's not going to be obscurity now. No. No, not at all. So the, the intent the curation, the cleanliness of data. It's that old governance bag that we've been talking about for X number of years. 
It's important. And now is the time to really approach our leaders. If you want this tool, if you don't want to get left behind technologically, you have to invest. You have to get your content ready, your environment ready, and your people ready. How are you learning about a lot of this stuff and, and gathering? Because, you know, what's great is I'll watch a Microsoft session, but the problem is that assumes you've done everything beautifully. And we live in this idyllic world where everything's using every product and using it correctly. And, and that's not the truth. So how are you learning about all this and getting your information? I have it. So that's fun. And David Francoeur, one of my coworkers and I, actually went and did some things in our environment and, and tested Copilot. With it, tested. We asked it, asked it for like an official logo. Oh, but one of the ones it brought back was not our official logo. Right. But it was still searchable and findable. And it was still in an area that a lot of us are in. Right. I talk to my coworkers, my colleagues that are out in the community. I go to events such as this one. Yeah. Talk to people that actually have their hands on it. And yes, as you said, the Microsoft content is fabulous. If you do it right, this can be what you get. But I really enjoy going out to adoption.microsoft.com. Carolina's team does a great job. It's amazing. If you've never been there, go. You're going to get such good information. And it's not the perfect world scenario. It's how do I start? What do I do? Right. How do I upskill myself and my people? So if, yeah, the goal is to take all of this, mm -hmm. try to get it down to this, and then Copilot will really whittle it right. down to what right. those answers are and what you're looking for. And there's a lot of work to do out there on this. And I think <coughs> some of our people, our customers, or organizations out there, we think we're okay. Some of us know we're not okay. No. But I have an interesting perspective in my job because I'm sitting with a potential or future, maybe even a current customer. And for the first time ever, they have a dashboard in front of their face that shows them the number of modern experience workspaces they have in their environment. Right and what percentage are actually active versus inactive. And is this through Viva? What is this through? What, what tool is this through? So this is through Orchestry Software. Okay. So a moment, talk about Orchestry Software. Well, thank you. So we are an adoption governance automation tool. And one of the things we do, it's one, it's probably my second favorite feature, is report on what's actually active and in usage in your environment. So on this dashboard, we, how many teams, team sites, communication sites, Viva Engage communities do you have? How many of those are shared with guests? How many of those are active? How many are inactive? Right. On average, only 33% of content is ag active. Yeah, 33%. Yeah. Sometimes I see 50 or 60% and they're like, oh, that's terrible. I'm like, actually, you're doing well. Awesome. Yeah. You're doing well. Interesting. Okay, where could people go to learn more about you and more about Orchestrator and all the stuff we've been chatting about? Oh, of course. So, orchestry.com is a great website to go. Not Orchestrator. Orchestry. Look at it right here. Oh, there we go. Orchestry. Yes. Starship Enterprise kind of logo there. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we like our graphics. You're on LinkedIn, of course. I'm absolutely on LinkedIn. Joy Apple. There aren't many of me, so I'm pretty easy to find. I'm also on, is it, I guess I have to call it X now. Yeah, it's Twitter. It's Twitter. Uh, I, am, I am still the joy of SharePoint. Yes, you are. So because that was just such a big part of your life for so long. And it still is. It still is. It still is. It still is. Uh, but when I won MVP... Almost four years ago, Jeff Teepers congratulated me and said, please don't ever change your Twitter handle. It's like, yes, yes sir. sir. I saw him yesterday. That's great. Yeah. Lovely man. One final question. This one's for the Microsoft folks. Um, this is a community conference. What does community mean to you? Oh, my. That is a huge question. Community means a lot of things to me. Um, support is a big thing. Um, encouragement. Learning, mentorship. I cannot imagine anyone trying to manage this space and do the things we do without the camaraderie, the friendship, the, the co-learning. I mean, we have conversations just walking by each other yeah. at a conference and we learn things. We support each other. Through, through social, through conferences and all that. Yeah. Somebody said, and I thought it was really great. It is where you really unselfishly share 
your secret sauce. Everybody else shares theirs and it helps you to go back and do your job better. Yep. And you get that. Here's how people are doing it in the real world and their shared experiences become part of yours. I had an interesting insight this week. So one of my colleagues has been in software sales for her entire professional career. Yes. She's not been plugged into the Microsoft side of the world. Huh? So this is her big micro, first big Microsoft conference to come to. And she looked around, we did an event for some of our partners, customers and Microsoft friends the other night. And then she saw some of them meeting and talking the first day of the conference. And she says, this is different. I said, in what way? She goes, I'm seeing competitors hug, share their inside tips. I'm seeing consultants go, well, how are you approaching this? And they're sharing. And I said, that's the community. We're here together because there's enough for everyone. It's not. And there are some, yeah, this is, it's, yes, we're all competitive and we should be and try to do the best we can for our customers and against each other. But we also don't want to see people, people fame. Ever. Unnecessarily. And that's huge. Yep. That's the community. Awesome. Love it. Thanks, Joy. Thank you. Thank you for having me.